Hey guys, so today I'm going to be going over the 2021 Subaru Outback with you to show you all of the controls on the interior of the vehicle. If you have any questions about your new Subaru or maybe you're looking to buy a new Subaru, this should answer a lot of those for you. If, uh, if you leave this video with having additional questions, leave them down in the comment section below. I'll be happy to answer that for you. Maybe even make a dedicated video to answer that uh, for you. So. Um, without further ado, let's jump into this. I'll show you how to operate this car. So this Outback specifically has the keyless access. Uh, if you're curious about all of the controls and the buttons on the keyless access, then click on the YouTube card above. It'll send you to a video that I made a couple weeks ago that will show you more details on that because today we are going to specifically be looking at the interior of the car. So starting out, whenever you get in the car, uh, you're going to want to adjust your seats. You can do this from the seat uh, driver's seat position, but I'll show you from the side here because it's easier to see these buttons. So this power seat moves, this button right here moves the seat forward. It moves it back. It also moves it down and it'll move the base up. So you can really fine tune your perfect seating position. You can also adjust the seat back. So this right here, the, the incline, with the middle button. And then this right here changes the lumbar support. So the uh, the stiffness of the center of the seat back here. So you can adjust that right there. Additionally, you can adjust your steering wheel. You can release this lever and I'll get inside the car to show you. It is telescoping so you can push it forward and back. You can move it up and down, really get it in a good spot. Once it's in a good spot, you just push that lever back up and lock it into place. So this car has the push button start located over here. So you put your foot on the brake, push and hold that and it'll fire it right up. So we'll start over here. All of these controls are pretty much uh, basic across the board. Most other cars have something similar to this, but you have your uh, left and right mirror controls right here. Your lock and unlock, your power windows, uh, locking rear windows for pets and children in the back if you don't want them rolling the windows up and down. Over here, you have your power rear gate button. Right here, you have your dash control. Uh, this actually uh, lowers and uh, also increases the brightness. And this is your uh, power rear gate sensor in the Subaru logo. I'll try to include a uh, like a screen grab of how this operates for you. Uh, but this button turns that sensor on and off in the back on the Subaru logo. Uh, one reason why you may want to turn that off is say if you're washing your car and you swipe past the sensor, um, if that is turned on, then the hatch is going to open automatically. So you'd want to turn that off. Not every Subaru Outback has this, uh, but certain trim levels do. This one in particular is the Premium Package 15. I believe if you go anything lower than that, you don't have this uh, power rear gate option. On your steering wheel, you have your volume controls right here. When you're listening to the radio, you have your source control right here that toggles between your AM, FM radio and satellite radio. This button up here will change between different channels. And then this is like your, if you use iPhone, this is your voice command button or Android, it works as well. But iPhone, they call it Siri. This is uh, essentially your Siri button. You click and hold to make phone calls. This is your uh, answer and hang up button. You'll also see it on the dash as well whenever you get calls. And in order to use these with your phone to use voice command, you have to sync up your phone through Bluetooth, which is uh, really easy to do. Um, I'll make a separate video on that to show you guys how to do that. These controls over here are your cruise control. With all new Subarus, you get adaptive cruise control as a standard. I made a video on this uh, where you can see it in more detail. You can click the YouTube card above to watch that video, but it'll show you how this operates. The main thing to know is that this is your cruise control button. It'll pop up on the screen over here. And uh, to set your cruise control, you click down to set it and you can adjust your speed from there once it is set up or down, depending on how fast you would like to go. This up button and this down button, that changes your distance between your vehicle, the front of your vehicle and the lead vehicle in front of you. So when your adaptive cruise control is set, this will change that. 
And basically what that does is if you have never used adaptive cruise control is if you set your cruise control at 60 miles an hour and the car in front of you starts slowing down, your car will automatically start slowing down with these cameras. They can detect the distance and the objects in front of you. It'll slow your car down to, uh, to keep you from having to turn off your cruise control, turn it on and off multiple times. So it allows you to do that seamlessly. This button right here is your lane centering. So whenever that's turned on and active, it'll light up green and it'll use the power steering. Those same cameras up there will detect the lines on the left and the right side of the road and it'll gently guide you back and forth. If you put on your blinker, it'll deactivate, it'll turn that power steering feature, that uh, lane centering feature off. Or if you just gradually merge into the next lane, it's gonna automatically turn it off. So you have full control of the car at all times. It's not meant to be autonomous driving or anything like that. It's just there to help prevent you from coming into a head-on collision from crossing the lines. Your buttons right here, they're up and down buttons, and this button right here is a select button. Uh, that allows you to toggle to different vehicle metrics. So fuel economy, tire pressure, compass, things like that. You've got your upshift and downshift paddle. Now you may be a little bit confused about that because this isn't a sports car, but it does have a manual mode. So in drive over to the left, this is your manual mode where you can then use the upshift and downshift paddles. And uh, that is mainly to replace the uh, high and low gear that you previously would have seen on other cars. So obviously Subaru designs their cars for people who have very active lifestyles. Maybe they're going hiking, things like that. Well, sometimes getting to a trailhead, you're on a steep terrain and this will allow you to keep both hands on the wheel while shifting into a higher or a low gear. Uh, this controls your lights over here and your blinkers. The left and the right stock are pretty much standard across the board on most of your other cars nowadays. You do have your wiper controls over here as well as your rear wiper. Um, this is how you turn on your rear wiper. And to use the spray in the back, you just twist. And it'll do that. And of course, to use your front wipers, you just pull down on it. And you can adjust the speed and the frequency with this little dial right here. Down here by the shift knob, you have your uh, USB inputs. So you can plug your phone up and mirror your iPhone or Android device onto the screen using Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. I'll show you that in just a moment. This is your electronic parking brake. If you've never seen one of these, it's kind of confusing at first, but it's really easy to use. So to engage it, you just pull up. It'll light up red right here and it'll light up on the dash to tell you it's engaged. To disengage that, you just press down, have your foot on the brake and you'll, you'll feel it release on the brake and obviously it'll tell you on the dash too that it's no longer in park. You have your hazards right here. Analog volume control, analog channel changer or tune button. You have your front windshield defrost button right here. This is your side mirror and rear window defrost. And then you have dual climate control for the driver and the passenger. And this can be controlled, the temperature can be controlled uh, through the analog buttons. Now on the tablet, we'll start with this. Uh, it's just like your smartphone and you've got a home button right here. And you have your multiple apps to navigate to the different screens and options that you want. So we'll start with the temperature controls. Here's your on and off button. And whenever that is on, if you click on the temperature over here, it'll allow you to scroll up and down to adjust your temperature. You've got your heated seat. There's three settings. And you can do that for either yourself or the passenger seat. Same controls. You can also adjust your fan speed down here. And whenever you click into this, you can adjust the fan speed here and you can adjust the position of where the fan is blowing. So it's really easy to use once you, once you know how. The icon right here with the little A and the green light, that is your auto start stop button. So all of the new cars come equipped, not just Subaru, but most of your new cars nowadays come equipped with a feature called auto start stop where whenever you come to a complete stop, 
the engine will shut off temporarily to save fuel and to reduce emissions into the environment. So you can turn that off right here if you if you want. Some people don't like that. And it will stay off for the entirety of your trip. But say, for example, it's off right now. We're, we're done. We're where we're driving to. Turn the car off. Turn it back on. Your auto start stop will default on at all times. So that is how all the new cars are designed today. And it's, it's now a default. If you click on the little car icon, this will take you into a screen where you can see some of your main controls. This one up here is your vehicle dynamic control. That's your traction control. X mode. So all Subarus are all wheel drive with the exception of the BRZ. And so if you are in a situation where it's snowing or raining or going to a trailhead, something like that, where your wheels may be slipping, if you put it in X mode, it will reduce the, uh, the power that is going, say from the front wheel, the front wheel is slipping. It will send power to the other three wheels and regain traction on all four. Your cruise control characteristics. So this allows you to adjust your adaptive cruise control settings. So for example, right now it's set in standard, but say whenever you are driving, you're going 60 miles an hour down the highway, your cruise control is set. A car in front of you slows down, causes your car to slow down. Well then what happens whenever that car moves out of the way? Your car wants to speed back up to the original speed that you set, say at 60. Well, if you're going 20 miles an hour, cause that car slowed down quite a bit, it's gonna feel like your car is gonna speed up really fast. Maybe don't like that you can put it in comfort mode and it will gradually it'll slowly speed back up to that speed or maybe you want it to go really fast you can put it in dynamic but the car by default will be on standard whenever you get it auto vehicle hold this is a great feature and something that I think a lot of people would really love so what this does is whenever you are driving you come to a stoplight and or a train or you're waiting in the drive through when your foot is applied to the brake and this AVH is turned on. So right now it is lit up AVH, but whenever I take off, cause I'm in park right now, whenever I take off and I'm still in drive and I come up to this stoplight up here and I've got my foot on the brake, the AVH logo will light up next to the AVH letters there. And it'll tell you that you can let your foot off the brake and you can actually sit there at a light without your foot on the brake to decrease driver fatigue and you know allowing you not to to cramp up your foot while you're sitting there at a long light or a long train the next tab i'll show you is driving assistance so there's not a whole lot here but the pre-collision braking so this is up front if you wanted to turn that off then you can do that right here the lane departure prevention function. So this will automatically detect and alert you on your dash whenever you're getting too close to the left or the right side of the road. If you wanted to adjust the warning or completely turn that off, you can do so right here. And blind spot detection, rear cross traffic alert. That is the blind spot indicators in the mirror caps right here. This little black bar will light up orange when you have somebody in your left or the right side in your blind spot. And the rear cross traffic alert is whenever you put it in reverse. You'll of course be able to see cars coming to an extent with your rear camera. However, when cars are coming from the left and the right uh, quickly, maybe down an aisle way at a grocery store, you may not see them right away. Well, this will alert you visibly and audibly through the screen right here that somebody is in your rear cross traffic. And then lastly, on this screen, you've got other, which is gonna be like your, your uh, units for your gauges up here, miles per hour and your volume controls. So up to the top left, when we get back to our home screen, you've got your map button. So any of the vehicles equipped with navigation will have it up here for uh, Tom Tom navigation. Now I'm gonna show you real quick on the screen here what it looks like if you decide, say your car doesn't have navigation and you wanna plug your phone up through this USB input right here with your USB cable. So now I have the cable plugged in. I'm filming from my phone so you can't really see it. So not only do you have the benefit with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto of being able to have navigation on the screen without having it in the car, so say through your Google Maps, but you also have the ability to listen through a Spotify, Pandora, audiobooks directly from the infotainment in your car. So that's another 
key feature that I think makes Apple CarPlay and Android Auto uh, a great option. It comes standard on the base model on up, so you're not paying any extra for it. And it's just something that comes with them. So you also have your phone button here. When your phone is connected through Bluetooth, it'll pop up here. Any devices that are connected where you can listen to music wirelessly or receive phone calls, things like that wirelessly. Got your radio icon. You have the ability to listen to FM radio, AM radio, and Sirius satellite. And you can choose your favorite channels and click and hold one of these icons. It'll beep and it'll set that as one of your favorites where you can have it here so you can have multiple favorites. Here under the apps button, you'll be able to see your My Subaru app, your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It's grayed out right now so you can hardly see it because the USB cable is not connected anymore. Under car info, you'll be able to see different driving statistics. Um, you'll be able to learn more if you click on any of these buttons here, it'll tell you what different features are on the car, like the pre-collision braking, it'll tell you what that is and lane departure warning. So you can click on all of these, it'll tell you what is on the vehicle. You can also click this maintenance button, which is an important one because you want to be able to keep track of your maintenance schedule. So new Subarus, uh, they are recommended that you get your oil changed, full synthetic oil and filter change about every 6,000 miles or once a year. So that's why whenever you buy a new Subaru, you'll already see it set in here uh, when the last oil change was. And also uh, this will you know keep you on track for your maintenance schedule. And you can click these little sprocket icons to adjust the date or the mileage for any of these. Your My Subaru app. So this will be active whenever you buy your new Subaru. You can download it on your phone as well, but this will allow you to have your roadside assistance, things like that. You can also click these buttons up here, the SOS and the I button. If you're ever in an accident or need roadside assistance, then you can click these and it will uh, call out and a representative, a Starlink rep will be on the speakers of the car and uh, locate the car and send somebody out. You've got your settings button over here, just like you do on your phone where you can adjust your clock, your display, different things like that. Um, you'll see Wi-Fi here. You can get Wi-Fi and use the vehicle as a hotspot, but you do have to pay for that through AT&T, I believe. So you have to add it like you would any other cell phone plan. I would honestly probably suggest you take a look at what you already have. You may have like hotspot if you have a wireless plan. I know I do through Verizon. And so I also have so so much data in terms of, of how much I can use for a wireless hotspot. So you might be able to just use that through your phone anyways. And so this would be kind of redundant. So you can change your different settings like language and camera settings, all of that, tire pressure units. Got your navigation settings. So you can adjust different things for the TomTom Tom navigation specifically. Your sound settings. So you can really kind of fool with this and set it up however you personally like it. And the last thing that I'll show you guys is up here on the top. So right now we've got our location and weather displayed, but you can toggle through here. This is your on and off button for your X mode if you want to get a, uh, be able to get to it quicker. Going back over to the left, you've got your temperature controls for your vehicle and your radio. So you can adjust that from any screen just from the top here. And then of course you've got your time and temperature up there as well. So there's just a few more buttons I wanted to show you guys. Up on the mirror, some of your Outbacks will have auto dimming. If it does, you'll see this little button in the center. It's lit up green right now. So when a bright uh, light from a car is coming from behind you, the mirror will automatically dim. If you don't want that on, you just click that, it'll turn it off. And then these three buttons right here allow you to sync up your garage door openers. If you want to see that, then let me know. I'll send you a link to a video that will show you how to set that up for your garage doors. And then lastly, if you have a power moonroof, you'll have the controls right here where this will open up. And to close it, simply push it forward.
So I hope that this helps you learn more about your new Subaru or learn more about a new Subaru if you are interested in buying one. If you guys have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.